Hi everyone, in this video we're going to show you how Inscribe's document fraud detection models work to identify if a document submitted to your team during an onboarding application or a loan application has been tampered with or manipulated in any ways. So first, when we look at this Wells Fargo bank statement, I've turned off all of the fraud signals that Inscribe caught just to give you a sense of what this looks like to the naked eye and the challenge that a human reviewer has when trying to identify a fraudulent document. So overall, this looks pretty legitimate. It's something that a human might approve. But when we turn on the fraud signals from Inscribe, you can immediately see in the top left and in the bottom right are a couple of areas that are deemed as suspicious. Now, if we look at the right side, we see all the information related to fraud on this document. First, every document processed through Inscribe is given a trust score. The trust score is an indication of how likelihood the document is to be fraudulent on the low end of zero or likely to be legitimate on the high end of 100. The trust score is made up of two main components. The first is the combination and severity of the fraud signals that we detected on the document. You can see here that we have detected six different signals of different severity levels. And the second component is how familiar we are with the document type. So our team has processed hundreds of thousands of Wells Fargo statements to this point. We have a very good sense of what the fonts and the formatting and the metadata should be for this document. And when we see these signals show up, we have a high degree of confidence that these are unusual or suspicious for a Wells Fargo statement. Looking at these individual signals though, these also fall into a couple main buckets. The first are what we call network signals. Since Inscribe has processed tens of millions of documents, we have a very good sense for what the font, formatting, and overall characteristics of documents from different institutions or issuers should look like, and we can call out if there's anomalies there. A good example in this case, we can see Jane Deere in the bottom right is being flagged as a font anomaly, as this is not the usual font used on a Wells Fargo statement in that region of the document. The other main bucket of fraud signals are what we call metadata signals or forensic signals. Good example of this would be software. So this document was created with a common consumer PDF editing software, which is typically associated with fraud. We have dozens of these different softwares that we've block listed, and we'll call those out for you if they're used on a statement where it would be usually suspicious to see that. Best of all, under the high severity bucket, we have the x-ray signal. The x-ray signal allows you to see the revision history of the documents, know exactly how it was altered and what was there before. So again, this is the document we were just looking at from Jane Deere. If we scroll back to look at the original, you can see it actually belonged to John Doe at 149 Atoma Street. And Jane basically got access to this document, put her information over the top, and might have applied to open a new account. So either way, these are the types of insights that make it much easier for a human to make very informed decisions very quickly. Uh, and hopefully we can have the opportunity to show you the types of fraud that we can catch on a sample of your documents. Thanks, and let me know if you have any questions.